get this straddle. Get it. We're gonna close out the series, guys, with this straddle plan. Yeah. Come on, boys. <laughs> Come on, boys. <laughs> I think I'm gonna. I cut. Well, I'm gonna start the workout by seeing where I'm at with my negatives. He's seeing where he's at. Oh man, I can sing. <laughs> Starting with Kermit the Frog. Oh, Kermit the Frog negative. Not bad. Wasn't too hard given I was doing an impression <laughs> mid rep. <laughs> Whoa! Alright, just fall then. Now we'll try the straddle negative. I'm not gonna try and hold it, I just wanna do the negative and go through it, see how it feels. Remember, we're coming off a layoff. <laughs> yeah, so, I felt pretty good for having a break. It's not, doesn't feel as strong as I think episode eight and nine, but it still feels decent and I'll be able to build upon that once I kind of get that rust off from the deload and start to surpass it. So for compression, I touched on this I think in episode seven, where it's not so much about having flexible hamstrings or a flexible, like a, not a tight lower back, I mean, you do need those things, you need a fle flexible hamstrings and that, but it's more about having that ability to, I think you would say engage the hip flexors, be able to raise your legs up without your quadriceps cramping, and yeah, being having that mobility to come down towards your knees as well. That's something that I think needs the focus. So, I have shown this in the past as well. I, uh, I do recommend it, but you gotta take it with a grain of salt because I can't do it yet, the skill I want. <laughs> so I think this is really helpful. I'm just down here, pike position. The further my hand, the closer my hands are to my feet, the harder it is. The closer they are to my butt, the easier it is. I go about halfway and do 10 reps. I also think there's value in holding it for 10. And then, even though this isn't the position, I still think this would have carryover into the goal, which is doing your straddle and doing individual leg and also a full straddle leg lift. still suck at it, but I'm definitely better than when I first started doing this years ago. So that's something I think will contribute to that compression when I actually go to fold in half. The lip raising my legs into that compressed position, it's be, it'll be the same movement as I pike in that handstand or up to handstand. Ah. 
It's the least impressive skill, yet it takes so much out of me every time I do that one. So I'm not doing anything too, too strenuous to zap me, zap me of my fluids. Yeah, nothing too, too big today. Just kind of getting back into it. And I think the strength will rapidly come back and improve from there. As long as I'm consistent, I could be more consistent with my compression. So I need to be working on that every day because that's not particularly fatiguing, it's more just something you need the muscle memory for, to accustom your body to know how to compress and to relax in that position. Do your hardest, man. I'm gonna go for it next time, bro. <laughs> nice. What do you think? That's good, man. We're gonna get this straddle. Get it. We're gonna close out the series, guys, with this straddle plan. Yeah. Come on, boys. <laughs> Come on, boys. <laughs> Come on. Oh, I was hoping to get a good kick. <laughs> that one. Yep. Go. Now look at each other. I love your eyes. <laughs> oh, I held that for ages and it fucked me up. So that wraps the One Planch Man series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was, as I said at the start, it was very much just a, these are my goals and this is the training for it. There wasn't any, you know, flashy edits, music videos, big, bigger production values, just the raw training for it. And I think I did pretty well. I mean, it, it's the 20th of, 21st of September, so, it wasn't exactly June to August like I planned, 
but that's okay. I was feel like I had a longer break than I anticipated near the end of it, but after that long break, I came back way stronger and got these, got the goals. I mean, the the pike press is messy. That's not as compressed as I wanted, and the straddle planche isn't as solid as you'd want when you think of what the goal is to be. But I got the movements or held the movements in the straddle planche case of in and of themselves, and I just have to refine that process now. Looking back on it. I was pretty happy with how I trained for planche. I've trained for planche so many times, I'm quite confident I know how to train for it. But the pike press would just be... <clears throat> I could have done the compression stuff because it's not very taxing. I just could have done that more. I could have done it every day. And I kept meaning to, but never would I say I had a consistent stretch of time where I kept at it. But. That is the series done. Thanks so much everyone for tuning in and watching this niche little series <laughs> that it was. What else do I want to say about the series? Thanks Kurt for filming lots of it. No worries mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's wrap it there. If you have any questions about the series, just comment down below and I'll make sure that I answer you guys with anything specific. But I hope this 10 episode series was valuable for you, you got something out of it and it motivates you moving forward with your own training. Peace! Oh, let's cave to YouTube pressure. Peace! And then do the palm. Do the palm transition. Or the... Uh, just failed peace. terribly in that. At the end of the video? Yeah. Why? <laughs> See you guys for the next video. That's how you end the series.